Hey guys, welcome back and this is a quick video about the latest fairy tale game update that was released yesterday alongside some of the DLC. Depending on the platform that you play on, the version is 1.04 or 1.05 and it gave us something to make our teams even stronger than they already are. As you know, you can increase your character rank in the guild hall at the guild ledger. For each rank you will need to hand in fairy points which you receive as rewards for completing quests, upgrading facilities and completing guild challenges. But while the maximum character rank was 10, this has just been increased to 12 with this update. Bringing a character from rank 10 to 11 costs 350 fairy points and from rank 11 to 12 costs 400 fairy points. This brings the full cost of upgrading a character from rank 0 to 12, a total of 2250 points. Now normally the amount of character ranks you can unlock are capped based on how many character stories you have completed. You had to complete all three character stories in order to go up to character rank 10. But when it comes to rank 11 and 12, you don't need to do an extra character story for that. In fact, they haven't added any character stories. So all you need to do is hand in those fairy points. So what do these ranks actually mean? Rank 11 and rank 12 both provide the very same effect for each character. And these are... 1. You get a better version of the Awakening Enhanced Character skill, which pretty much means that when a character awakens, he will get 100% HP back upon awakening and the awakened status gets extended by one turn. And 2. Your character will now enter the battle with a full awakening gauge. So this means that your whole team can enter the awakening state from the very beginning of the battle, which is pretty huge to be honest. One thing to point out is that the Awakening Gauge only fills up once it's the character's turn though. Not that this matters too much in the grand scheme of things, but it's something to keep in mind. Just in case you were expecting to like, do chain attacks from the very beginning or something. Did we really need this effect though? Not really, in my opinion. I mean, even with the additional S rank quest from the DLC, a power up like this wasn't necessary at all. And with how things have been going, I doubt the upcoming dungeon DLC in two weeks will require it either. But at the end, it's a nice free addition, I guess. Although I secretly hope that the new character ranks would have unlocked new skills for each character. I mean, come on, please give Mira more skills and don't act like there's nothing to work with. We can see that a base Satan soul form is in the game. It's right there in the unison raid with Erza. Please just give it to us. But anyway, the character ranks were not the only thing that's included in this patch. There were some typos that they fixed, but the only thing I could really find is that Kana's name is actually spelled with a C. But wait, if you look closely at the patch notes, this patch also fixed various bugs. Now I do not know about you, but when I think of bugs in this game, there's only one single thing that comes to mind. Continuing on the outfits, there is actually a little thing going on with outfits and the special awakening forms of some characters. We don't know if this is a bug or by design just yet, but if you try to enter a special awakening form while wearing an alternative outfit, the character model does not really change according to what the awakening is supposed to look like. I will use Wendy as an example right now. So while she's wearing her Sky Scissor outfit, she doesn't change, but in a default outfit, she does get a Super Saiyan hair. Mind you that this only applies to the Dragon Slayers and Grey so far. Could it be? Could they have actually fixed this? I mean it would be a good time now that they've added even a bigger emphasis on Awakening through the character ranks. Screw it, I'm gonna find out right away.